Well, the day wouldn't be complete if we didn't have some technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, so we've been looking at Luke chapters 13 and 14 here. Jesus talking about the narrow door, and he goes to eat at a Pharisee's house. I think we read that. Hmm. Well, one Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, there in front of him was a man suffering from abdominal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you're invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Just as when Jesus was talking about the narrow door, many of the first will be last, many of the last will be first. And this is how it is in God's kingdom. You see, as Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem, he's stopping with different people and staying at their houses and teaching. And he's telling them all these parables. And you can flip forward in the Gospel of Luke and you'll see some of the parables that Jesus teaches them as he travels. And some of them, they really need a teacher, like this Pharisee. The Pharisee, of course, is wealthy. He has a lot of people at his table. So he's a man of means. And he tells this Pharisee how he's got it backwards. You shouldn't be putting yourself first. You shouldn't just be meeting with your peers. Everyone is welcome in God's kingdom. He goes on to tell his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or sisters, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back. And so you will be repaid. How horrible. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And this is how God wants us to be the church. You notice today we talked about money. And we don't have enough money because we're the church. And guess what? We're full of uh, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. But we are blessed because it's our job. It's our duty. It is our privilege to provide for those who have less than us. And so... I hope as a church that we will always be struggling for that ne to pay that next bill because it means we're doing what's right. It means that we are helping people. All through the next few chapters of Luke, Jesus is teaching and traveling. And in chapter 19, he finally comes to Jericho. And Jericho you may remember from a number of different stories. It's in the, in Joshua, it's, um, it's where the Israelites come and they march around the walls of Jericho. Well, it's just a little ways outside of Jerusalem. It's, 
actually I don't know how far it is by foot, but on a map, they're right next to each other. It says in chapter 19, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. That's, that's an awfully important title, isn't it? He's, he's not just a tax collector. He's the chief tax collector. And was wealthy. We can tell by his title. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus! Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be a guest of that sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. All the while in Luke, the last five chapters, Jesus has been staying at Pharisees' houses, and not one of them has thought that they needed to repent of anything. Not one of them thought that they weren't going to heaven for sure. Not one of them thought that they might need to be a better person because they say to themselves, we're sons of Abraham. We've all been circumcised. We're all going to heaven because we're all of Israel. We've got it in the bag. We don't need to be better people. God is going to come save all of Israel. Well, guess what? God is going to save the righteous. And just like the parable of the narrow door. God is going to say to some, I do, why would I let you through the door? I don't know you. Here Zacchaeus is making amends. He knows he's a sinner. He doesn't even argue that. He knows he doesn't deserve to have Jesus stay at his house. He's just hoping to see him pass by. And Jesus chooses to honor him. Here is the last being made first. So if you think that you have it in the bag, I think I have it in the bag. We really don't. We really don't. We can always be better people. We can always be better shepherds to the lost. We can always be doing more to help others. And we can always be looking to Jesus, even if we have to stand atop a tree, get on the rooftops, because he's far away from where we are now. And if we make the effort, if we reach out to Jesus, he'll return the favor. He will return the gesture and reach out to us. When I read the passage of the narrow door in chapter 13, this is often used to say that the Jewish people are not going to heaven. It doesn't say that at all. There are many churches, many anti-Semitic churches that quote this passage and they say, well, only Christians are going to heaven, you see. We're the new Israel. That's not what it says at all. It says many will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and take their places in the kingdom, in God's kingdom. But that doesn't mean he's not calling people from Israel. It means he's calling people to Israel to live the example that they've already set, to live the example of the Christ that was born in their kingdom. And so I hope as we move forward as a church, as we are traveling to Jerusalem just as Jesus is traveling here, 
because right now we're just a little house church, but we won't be for much longer. Pretty soon we'll have a place of our own, and I hope as we're on our way to Jerusalem that we remember to soak up every word of the Lord, to stand up on the roof, to look for his word so that we can live by his values, so that when he passes by, he sees each and every one of us and says, come down from there. I'm going to stay at your house today. Because even though we were all born last, God has seen fit to make us first. If it were not so, we would not be here today, seeking the Lord. It, it just kind of reminds me that really God knows our hearts mm -hmm. before anything else. And I think we don't even realize that sometimes. Oh, yes. So God knows our hearts and searches each and every one of us and is looking for the best person we can be. When some people preach these passages, they say you have to live by each and every one of these rules. And that's not what Jesus is looking for. He's looking for the person standing in the fig tree, looking to be a better person. Zacchaeus doesn't become a perfect person, but he does know how he's sinned. He's a tax collector. Of course he's cheated people. That's how he makes his living. It would be like, like someone owning a casino and saying, well, I've never cheated anyone. I've never per participated in predatory business practices. <laughs> Sir, you own a casino. <laughs> Zacchaeus knows he's in the casino business. He knows what he's done. And he knows what he has to do to make it right. And on the road to Jerusalem, he's the only Pharisee that does so. Jesus chooses to put him at the head of the banquet table. So, as we're on our way to Jerusalem, let's read the parables of Jesus and think to ourselves, what do I need to do? What do I need to put on the cross of Jesus? Because that's what Paul says. Don't you know that every sin that we have ever committed is now nailed to the cross of Christ? It has died. That sin has died, and we are born again. So as we approach Easter, as we approach Jerusalem, as we approach becoming a new church, moving to a new place, Think of this, go through the parables, the stories of Jesus, and pray over them and say, what do you need from me, Lord? What am I nailing to your cross this year so that I can die with you, so I can be reborn with you and be a new person again this year and every year? <laughs>